Out December 6th on 4K Ultra HD from Studio Canal is Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive, as you know, Russ already announced from Criterion in 4K. It was mm -hmm. one of their launch titles. But this limited edition here is going to be released in Europe, whereas Criterion is going to be the one for the U.S. Kind of interesting. I, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper on this because, you know, Criterion having announced this in 4K, I wasn't expecting someone else to announce it so soon in 4K. And there's a little bit of history between Studio Canal and this movie that, again, I wasn't too uh, aware of. Is there a difference in the release here? Does one have an edge on the other? What are the transfers? going to be like? Are they going to be the same? Are they going to be different? We've seen some Studio Canal stuff lately that looks really great. Some such as Terminator 2, which we discussed that looked like complete dog shit. So who knows, you know, was, was this going to be a similar story? So the Criterion one is essentially the same original poster art. This release completely overhauls everything. You're getting new art basically everywhere. That's a box. A cigar box. They call it a clamshell box. Hmm. So this clamshell box houses pretty much everything here. And as you can see, the only thing that's original as far as the promotional materials are concerned is that poster. Another little poster here with this new art. You get a booklet. But essentially everything has been redone. As far as the features go, this is a 4K restoration of the film supervised by David Lynch. It is a combo pack, 4K and blue. And I believe this is a steel book that comes in here. You're also going to get three different featurettes three different interviews, two posters, five art cards, an illustrated booklet with some essays, a clamshell box featuring all new artwork. So that's what you're getting with this Studio Canal version. But how does it compare to the Criterion? So the restoration is the same, supervised by David Lynch. Again, the Criterion has a combo pack, interviews from 2015 with Lynch and Naomi Watts, Justin Thoreau, a bunch of the other cast and crew, um, as well as some on-set footage a deleted scene, and then a booklet, which is a little bit different than the one that's here. So essentially, the Criterion one has some more interviews, but the Studio Canal has more featurettes on the disc. So that's how the discs are different. So you do have something different there. Maybe you might feel like you're getting a little bit more with the Studio Canal feature-wise, and now you're also getting a little bit more package-wise. So I guess there's you know just kind of a decision. Do you want both of these? Do you want just one of these? Uh, but the transfers themselves, it appears, might actually be identical. There's no way! Back when... Criterion put this out on Blu-ray. They got a 4K scan from Studio Canal. Studio Canal had done this 4K scan in 2015. Mm -hmm. That's the version that you see when you watch the Criterion Blu-ray of this film, is a 4K scan that Studio Canal put together. So then in 2021, for this movie's 20th anniversary, Studio Canal did a, another fresh 4K restoration of this film, which they also now have licensed to Criterion for their 4K release, hmm. but Studio Canal is going to put it out in the European market for them. So it's basically the same movie, it's just two different packages. Um, so kind of an interesting little note that I wasn't too aware of. I'm not sure about this. The set does look great. I do wanna say that I'm not a fan of the art. It's kind of embarrassing. Really? I don't really like it. Why? I don't know. I don't I don't like the the color palette here. It's kind of strange to me. It's like an orange, yellow, blue. I don't like the illustration of Naomi Watts on the bed there. It's not that great of a likeness to me. I don't hate it. Uh, I see what you mean. Uh, the original artwork feels more like the film it for works. myself. Basically, what I'm saying is this cover and box definitely give me David Lynch vibes. More so, yeah. But not necessarily Mulholland Drive vibes, yeah. if, if that makes sense. I like it, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. This set actually is act only $10 more than the Criterion version, and that's before um, any kind of shipping. For $10 more, you're getting a sizable package. It's the exact same transfer. Are the features for the Criterion 4K the same as the uh, release they already have? The Criterion Blu-ray uh, is Criterion 4K, the exact same thing. So I'll blow your mind. If the features aren't different on the Criterion release from the previous Blue, uh, I would probably pick this one up and just keep my Blu-ray of Mall and Drive Smart. for those features. How much better do you think they got the 4K to where you would need to upgrade through Criterion again? You know, like you said, you want something different, a new experience, new stuff, and, and gotcha. a new visual experience too. Right. Instead of having two Criterions, now you've got a Criterion and a Studio Canal with maybe a similar, or if not just a varied experience. But And all the features that are right. available. Right, all the features that are available. Really wild movie starring one of my favorites, Naomi Watts. Which I later found out that David Lynch cast her based on her photograph alone. Never even met her. Just like, was like, this is the one. Naomi came in and did not 
look exactly like the photograph that I had fallen in love with. It was disappointing. It was not <laughs> disappointing. It was um, uh, devastating. <laughs> I thought she was spectacular in this, and I was a fan of hers before even seeing this. So when I saw this and just kind of like solidified Naomi Watson, my mind even a little bit more. And another funny thing that I found out about her after this movie was she nearly just quit acting. You know, this movie probably didn't catch fire. I didn't probably catch fire like I hoped. And her roommate at the time, Nicole Kidman, <laughs> told her to like stick it out. And I guess she did. And now she's this whole acting a household thing, name. This whole acting thing isn't working. Let me ask my roommate, Nicole, Nicole Kidman, Kidman, in 1999. Exactly. <laughs> it's unreal, right? Yeah, yeah. It's ironic she felt that way because mm -hmm. this has kind of gone down to be seen as David Lynch's one of his best, maybe his best. I wouldn't say it's his best. You're too busy being a smart aleck to be thinking. The other thing I did not know about this movie at the time that I watched it, David Lynch, hot off the heels, I guess, of Twin Peaks, was approached to make another television show. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a 90-minute pilot for a television show called Mulholland Drive. Yeah. It wasn't picked up at all. But then Studio Canal, again, the tie-in here, um, reached out to him and basically said, we want you to finish this as a movie. We're going to give you some money for this. I think they pitched in like $7 million or something towards his already $8 million budget. He shoots a new hour's worth of footage, including an ending, because as the pilot he pitched to them, there was no ending. Mm -hmm. It was just like, the show is going to be the ending. Like, this is just the setup. Here you go. I'm not even sure I know how this thing ends. Um, <laughs> you know, but so, but then here comes that's David Lynch's career. Probably, yeah. maybe. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> television writing. Us Who knows? too, Dave. We don't know. Let's just give him that. Let's happen. give him that sizzle. We'll figure out the ending later. So here comes Studio Canal. They give him the money. He films more footage. He films an ending, cuts this thing together, and then releases it as a movie. Um, and that's what we saw. And I mean, it does kind of feel like a TV movie, you know, don't you think? After I read that, I was like, this could be a TV movie. It was just a TV pilot that was cobbled together and we all fell for it and the emperor has no clothes. I was completely fascinated by it and drawn into it and entertained by it and absorbed by it from beginning to end. I don't care what its source was, whether it was made for TV or whether it was made for David Lynch's home movies, is. it works. It does, but I mean, you could Not say production that. production value wise, but yeah. just like. I, I know exactly soft. what you mean. But but I don't honestly, know. you could say that about Blue Velvet. You could say that about Wild at Heart. You yeah. could even say that about Lost Highway. Uh, that's kind of Lynch's thing. They're, as you said, they're dreamlike. They're very. Like, vi not vibrant. I, I know exactly what you mean. Almost like soft focus. Oh, it does. Yeah. It feels like almost like TV. It's TV-esque. It's melodramatic. Yeah. It's all of that. I think he's been quoted as saying that he loves television. He loves the art of television. He loves he Americana. Loves making, he, yeah, well, that too. Yeah. I mean, he loves that long-form storytelling where he can tell you a story across 20 episodes or 12 mm. episodes because that's maybe what he can't achieve in a, in a film. So maybe that's how he always approaches everything. I don't know. I, I feel like if you're a fan of this art style right here, uh, this is a no brainer. If you, like haven't, if you haven't picked this up, if you haven't decided or you, you pre-ordered even the Criterion and now you've seen this, if you do like this art, I feel like this is the way to go. Like Russ, you mentioned, you know, you have the full slate of features then, you have your Criterion from before and this one. If you've never purchased either one, then you're in a bit of a pickle. But if you already have the Criterion from before, I'd say this is the way to go. Russ, will you be picking this up? No. Out December 6th. <laughs>